Here we have an application of rational functions where you and your family are heading out to San Diego from Phoenix, a trip that is 354.5 miles. In the first part of this problem, we're asked, given the relationship distance equals rate times time, write a rational function t of r that has the rate of travel r as its input and the time of travel, that should say t, as its output. Distance is constant. That's a lot of words to say really what is a very simple thing. In the formula d equals rt, it's written as d equals r times t. What we want to write is t equals something. So to do that, I'm going to divide both sides by r, so I get d over r equals t, and then I'm going to rewrite that from left to right, t equals d over r. So there is really the foundation of my function t of r. We just need to clean up the notation a little bit. So t of r, that just means t is the output time, the rate is the input, and that's the relationship described here, equals our constant distance, 354.5, divided by r. So there's my function, t of r. When I graph this function, I want to stay in the first quadrant because it doesn't make sense to have negative values for time or for rate. So I'm going to recommend a window from 0 to 80. Remember, the x min, x max, the x-axis represents my input, which is rate. So when I enter this into my calculator, I'm going to enter y1 equals 354.5 over x. And I'm going to go to window and put 0 to 80 for x min to x max, and then y min at 0. Again, we don't care about negative time. And then y max of 500. So again, the input axis is rate, and the output axis is time. When I use these values for the window and I graph, I'm going to get something that looks like this. I'm going to get just half of what we would get for a normal rational function. I'm just going to get one of these pieces, but I don't care. Again, I don't care about the negative values for rate and time, so I just want the first quadrant values. So question C says if you average 60 miles per hour, how long will the trip take? So that's 60 miles an hour, that's an R value. So I want to evaluate my function t with an input of 60. I'm going to take 354.5 divided by 60. And if I divide that on my calculator, 354.5 divided by 60, I get 5.9 hours for the trip. So, you know, 60 miles an hour is probably pretty good speed considering stopping and all of that. So six hours from Phoenix to San Diego seems pretty reasonable here. If the trip took 10 hours, what was your average rate of travel? So it's going to be less than 60, right? Because at 60 miles an hour, it was about six hours. So if the trip took 10 hours, that's an output value. So that 10 is a T value. So I'm going to replace T with 10 and then 354.5 over R. If I cross multiply here, I'm essentially multiplying both sides of an equation with 10 over 1 on this side by r. I get 10r equals 354.5. And then r equals 354.5 divided by 10. So r is 35.45 miles per hour. So we can ask some questions about the relationship between rate and time, and part E does exactly that. What does the graph indicate will happen as the rate increases? So we can follow the rates here. As the rates go up, what happens to the time? Well, think about it logically. The faster you travel, the less time it takes. So we can say as R increases, T, or our time, decreases. And that makes total sense. And the last, what does the graph indicate will happen as your rate gets close to zero? So if we're slowing down and our rate is almost zero, 
what happens is our time increases. So as say R, we can say R approaches zero, time increases. And again, that makes total sense because the slower you go, the longer it takes.